Marie uh, was just amazing. Here he was, well, I think 22 years old. Mm. Can anyone believe that Daniel Marie was what's 22? He was. Um, and even though I was 35 at the time, I never ever even considered that who's this young person? All I saw was great qualities of character and skill and, um, and an ability to explain really well. That was so important to me. And I just loved the way he conducted his classes. And so it just sort of resonated and clicked with me. So it was a way of um, uh, getting fit. I mean, some people go and jump around the aerobics hall, walk out and have no skills. But this was getting fit and learning skills that could, could save your life, maybe. So um, I, um, I started and three months into it, I fell pregnant with my fifth child. And, but I, that didn't deter me because I uh, then did my first grading when I was um, three months pregnant. Uh, and I remember in those days you graded, you went straight from white to yellow belt. Uh, and I did, I did the full grading and only just um, uh, Master Kim knew that I was pregnant and I just didn't have to do the falling. So then I um, uh, resumed when Nathan, my youngest, who's now 19, um, and I always judge my length of hep keto by his age. Uh, I resumed three months after he was born and I'm still here <laughs> 19 years you? later. Uh, I'm now a third degree and in training for my fourth degree um, next year when I will be 55. So that will be um, an amazing achievement, one would think. <laughs> but along with your... Well, I also found um, uh, at that time I was working first off as a high school teacher, then I went back and, to university and retrained and got um, my second master's in counselling psychology. Uh, so I was doing hap keto and at university at the same time, no problem, and, and raising five children, yep. Um, and then uh, I went straight into work as a school counsellor and I've been a counsellor for 10 years. Um, now hap keto was the very thing that uh, in my job as a, as a psychologist, um, I work with a lot of people with, one would say at the dysfunctional end of the scale, a lot of problems. Um, and Hapkido would help me debrief at the end of busy days and um, I'd walk in maybe still carrying a, a bit of stress, it would all be gone by the end of the, the session. In fact, I'd wonder what was the problem when I first walked in. So it's been my way of, of coping and dealing with the stressors attached to a very demanding, challenging job. So the, so the job and I to, um, uh, de-stress or a, a refocus on something else uh, because it would think when you walk in the door leave the stress and the job and the worries at home behind at the door you come in this is your time for you and that's always just been perfect just what I needed and has helped me so much uniform. putting on your uniform the moment you put your uniform on you tie your belt in that special way you know you're immediately connected to hundreds of years of tradition and, and philosophy. And everyone's on a level playing field. Everyone's equal. I can't bring their Ferrari. Either. In fact, you don't even know, because you're training with people, it takes a little while to sort of get to know that, fill in the background information about people because you're relating at one level and we're all the same. And so you don't know who the doctors and the lawyers and the psychologists and, and, and the concreters are. And it doesn't matter because that uniform connects us all. And, but most importantly, it's that connection with back from Australia, back to Korea, and then back to that incredible time in the past when it first started to be evolved. So it's amazing. That, that, that suggests and the connection with its philosophical past is the um, values and principles that it's based on uh, which aren't very far removed from um, what's called the way um, had ever been about competition I, I wouldn't be where I am today I wouldn't be here today um, I wouldn't have lasted a week because uh, I'm female um, I've always been older than most people in the class. There may have been one or two over the years that could have been older than me. But uh, for 20 years, I have been the oldest. 
I've got, I'm a mother with children. All these, all, all, all these single mum, all these reasons that people would use as excuses. Now, I have found that it's about, um, it, it's not about me competing with a 20 year old male at his peak of physical fitness, as they are between 20 to, to 30, at their peak, um, elastic, flexible. Uh, it's not about me against them, it's me against me. And it's me about breaking through barriers, self-imposed barriers, breaking through uh, any, any of those um, mind things uh, that we self-talk, that we tell ourselves or can't do this or whatever. It's breaking through that and going beyond it to you can and it's all possible and and so it is because well, I'm the living happen, example I would say that, that we have to um, master or oh, not even master but but uh, learn and gain uh, a knowledge of and an ability in doing for each of the, the belt grades um, is like the um, the outward um, shell of it because What's going on behind those techniques is more important. Uh, it's, it's what's going on that you can do it, not that you can't do it. There's, for me, there's no can't. Yoda said in Star Wars, uh, there's no try, it's do. So you do, you do the techniques and as you're gaining them, you're going to, it's taking you to another level of confidence, of mastery, of, um, of self-development, of realizing, hey, I couldn't do that for a month ago. Gee, now I can do it. What gives no, me no, some of too? Um, in in thinking this through in the last few weeks, knowing that I was going to be speaking about this, uh, I, one of course my black belt, and I will be saying that in, in a in a moment. Another very significant moment for me was when I was going for my green belt. Now it's amazing how this is stuck in my memory out of all the things that all the gradings I've done. And during my green belt grading, uh, it's quite a, a rigorous uh, pattern to do. It's probably one of the most challenging of, of the junior belt patterns. And um, I don't recall now what I did, but I, I know that I, I didn't do it properly. And I had to, I, I think they had to stop and say to, to redo it from a certain point onwards. I stuffed it up, in other words. Anyway, I, I finished the grading and I was, that was on my mind, oh, I stuffed my grading, I stuffed my pattern, oh, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail. And a couple of um, young men in the class um, said something to me that, oh, you know, you may fail because you stuffed your grade, you stuffed your pattern. And I was that devastated, that devastated that I think I, I rang Daniel Marie and I think I rang him that night when I got home and I was crying and threw my blubbering saying my pattern I stuffed my pattern I'm gonna fa he, you know what he said to me you know what Daniel Marie said to me he said what stuff up like what are you talking about and I went ah oh, okay and so he didn't even see it he didn't even it didn't register with him that there was a problem with my pattern so, and, and after that, I've just flown. And guess what? Those two young men didn't even get to black belt, don't even know what they got to. So, these things happen. <laughs> so, you learn that though, then? Hey, if you don't make mistakes, how do you ever learn? How do you improve? So, it's okay. To mistakes are, oh, another way of looking at a mistake is feedback. It's feedback. Okay, so now, how can I do that a little bit better? Uh, what did I, what wasn't I focusing on? What do I need to improve on? Sure. So mistakes, hey, welcome, bring on mistakes. Yeah, yeah I'm the but queen of mistakes. You say that, mm. you need to feel secure. The gradual evolution of gaining confidence within myself um, and uh, having a, a, a self, a self-awareness and a, and a, and a self-knowledge that um, that it's I don't need my self worth doesn't come from me doing something perfect and and being the best. It it comes from knowing that I'm doing the best that I can do and improving and I'm learning because this is a this is a constantly evolving art uh, as life is as anything is. It's it's constantly evolving and ever changing and getting better and expanding. So it's it seems and, like there's always something to. 
good to look forward to. Always something good to look forward to. And so my uh, confidence came first off with having an instructor who, like um, the wonderful Daniel Marie, and, and I also trained with Matthew Kim in the early days too, with Grandmaster Kim, and, um, and then uh, Scott and Mitchell. And it, it, my confidence in, in not worrying about mistakes came because they never worried about mistakes. They, they would say, what, what's good? Like, yeah, you make mistakes because, hey, who's perfect? And you know what they've always said? I can't do white belt pattern properly. And, and so I now say to white belts, wow, I'm still working on my turning kick. I, boy, you've got a good turning kick. I, I'm still working on that. You should see my turning kick. Oh. And so to show them, hey, you know, we're not perfect. Because, you know, that would defeat the purpose of growing and changing and developing. And, and that's it, not... Stop this, uh, I've, I'm constantly working on myself. Mm. Um, I not only perceive Hapkido as a personal growth program, and it is, uh, I've paid thousands of dollars for other personal growth programs which use the same techniques, goal setting, focus, determination, belief in self, um, uh, developing a, a, an awareness of self, uh, going, going for it, crashing through self-imposed barriers, trust. You pay thousands at other, other places and you've got it right here. If you're doing Hapkido now, you're on one of the best personal growth and personal development programs you could possibly be on because it uses it utilizes all everything that people like anthony robbins talk about everything that is in there is in this martial art and your learning skills as well and uh, the other um breakthrough i had would have to be my black belt training my black belt grading my my grading to black belt i had um that was where I did crash through self-imposed barriers, the final ones that I'm, I, I may have been, um, I think I was 40 something then when I did that, about 45 and um, yeah, 45. Uh, and I, I went through my gradient at the same time as a young girl, I think she would have been about 20 at the time. Um, and. Uh, and it was, I thought, oh, you know, I, I can't kick as high and do this as much, but it, it didn't matter in the long run because um, I was the one who broke with the high spinning heel kick and, um, and I was the one that um, Grandmaster Kim singled out and um, that night when he saluted me and bowed to me, it just was totally amazing that this, this incredible man um, could humble himself to to do this for me and that was the when I, I the everything fell into place what this was all about that that it's not about ego it's not about spinning heel kicks up here or it, it's about self and giving it a go and uh, showing spirit and I think that he was honoring me for showing spirit, and um, I'm I'm ever so humble to have um, to have known him, and to and everyone else connected with Hapkido, and and it, even today, I remember that learning because take on board learnings you get because learnings come in all sorts of ways. They're like they're like um, little breadcrumbs, but take the learnings on board, and the learning I got that night was to humble myself. And I now make sure that no matter how many Dans I get, that I will see in a white belt something that I can respect. And I will say to a white belt, yeah, I really like what you're doing. And, and I will let them know that I respect them because I, all the time I'm reminding myself that uh, a white belt a white belt is a very important belt, probably the most important belt you can get. With the black belt, you're just starting again. You just That's when you're just starting to gain the wisdom. Um, but And then the interesting thing that if you look at all your fourth degrees and all, all your third, de third degrees, their original black belts are turning white again. Because then from black belt, you're starting to gain the wisdom. Okay, so you, you think white belts are important. I, I, I... 
The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. You took the first step. If you're a white belt, you took the first step. Congratulations. And I th think... This house, getting out the door and taking the first step, the hardest step is the first step. The hardest step is that first step into that dojan. That is the hardest step because you're looking at all the, everyone else around you and all the different colored belts and it may look a bit daunting and whatever. But you've done that and you are on your journey from that moment onwards. And that's why it's then so important within a dojan that the, the people within there then, everyone assists you on your journey. And everyone is there to assist you, your instructor and everybody you train with. For me, as a going for a fourth degree, the white belts are assisting me on my journey. That's why at the end of the class, when we thank them, I, I wholeheartedly thank everybody as, as my training partners, thank you for assisting me on my journey. I like, I like that theme of people. Uh, pr physical prowess and skill and agility to be able to kick up, up here, I, I wouldn't have lasted a week. Mm. Um, the ability of the human mind has been the, re the reason this species is, is physical techniques and skills, mental clarity, alertness, centeredness within, all of these very important things, and, a, and an ability to, as a, as a group, to connect as a group and therefore that survival uh, as a species and, and, and that is why we're, like the animal kingdom is stronger than us. We could be easily killed by them because we're not the, the strong. But what, what sets us apart is, is, is in here and in here. And, and Hapkido is, is about uh, a little bit about this, a lot about this and mostly about this because this is this spirit inside this is what sets us apart from the animal kingdom and we are, are able to as a group um, work with our skills and within our uh, ex expanded abilities to survive and to cope and to get on in the world last time we did the interview um, we I, I um, took Hapkido up uh, after the birth of my, my last child uh, to get back into shape and to um, uh, continue on my journey. Uh, however, as a person, and as I said, this has always been a personal, a personal development program for me, as a person in those days, um, early on, um, I had uh, not been making the, the most appropriate choices in certain areas of my life. The, some areas were, were brilliant academically, things were fabulous. Um, in certain personal areas, as we do in relationships, we make mistakes, hey, we, we learn, we grow. Um, and I'd been disempowered, felt the receiving end of being disempowered and um, uh, not a good place to be. Um, so, uh, domestic violence is common these days and uh, I guess what I'm doing is standing up for women that we can be empowered and the ironic thing is the more you develop the confidence and the empowerment within yourself, there's just suddenly there's just not even an issue or a problem of, um, of, of being uh, hit or hurt anymore. Uh, it just um, just fades away because I think it, it's a, it's an expansion that comes from the inside out, and uh, that empowerment and growth that can't that came with it um, just um, seemed to put an end to anything that could have been um, happening to me then. That, that sounds pr uh, pretty important. Yeah, yeah. That's so safety. Safety. Yep. Uh, it was just that confidence, that that growth of uh, safety and confidence, um, and. Uh, and also knowing how to defend myself helped yeah. out a little bit too. Mm -hmm. But then that didn't become an issue. Um, it, it was a very brief time, but I had been making some inappropriate choices and yeah, these things happen. Hey, I wouldn't have found Hapkido. I mean, it's amazing the way life goes that sometimes a crisis occurs and, and good can come out of it. Uh, once again, if you focus and look for the way uh, and follow the way. Um, go, go with the flow and go with the way. Your body never... Keto has um, 
uh, been able to give me is also that awareness of my environment and that idea of safety and um, being aware of potential danger. Um, I worked um, in the Bankstown area for seven, seven years uh, in my capacity as a psychologist out there and many, many times I was in areas and with people that many other people wouldn't want to be near. Um, I never ever felt uh, that I was unsafe because I had this, this because of my knowledge of Hapkido and also it, it's just a, a knowingness that can come from the inside out. Um, I felt confident um, to know that I could, could do something if I had to, but I never had to, which was good too. Um, but I, I had an awareness of my environment and I felt safe within myself because I had the knowledge that I could do something if I had to. Um, there's been a time also when I was um, sort of cornered on a train once. Um, I was uh, travelling and I was reading a magazine and two people sat down and um, ripped the magazine out of my hands and put their feet up on the chairs so that they were blocking my path. This is a very interesting story. It was interesting because we did this scenario. It was a man and a woman. And uh, uh, what I then did was because we used, used the, the water principle, softness against hardness. So instead of getting angry, you know, what you do that for? Uh, softness. So I started to engage them in conversation. In fact, I talked about the magazine, my magazine, and said, yeah, are you interested in this? And, and I talked to them and I engaged them. I got into what I would also call in psychology rapport with them. So then, and knowing all the time that at some point I would have to get out of the train because my stop was coming up and I wanted to be able to do it with ease and grace and not have to fight my way out, but I knew I could do that if I had to as well. But, so my, my, my way was still blocked. So in engaging them in conversation, remember the, the flow of water, softness against hardness, uh, in talking to them, then when I knew that my stop was coming up, I then uh, quite assertively, not aggressively said, I have to get out now, please move your leg. And it was like an automatic reaction. The man did and I said in my magazine, please, and walked out, no problem. So these little things, and I don't even know where that came from, but it came and that's what Hapkido does. It just trains you to look after yourself um, with integrity um, and all the philosophy makes sense when you're placed in those situations and there's many many times because of the work that I do that I am constantly placed in situations where people are angry like ang in your face anger all the time uh, where certain people might snap back anger and um, you just you learn just not to not to the anger you deflect the anger and you learn to diffuse it because if you, the softness against hardness, if you deflect the anger, it's all gone. Mm. That softness against hardness print. Turn 50, I wanted to honour um, all the people that um, had led to my, uh, my growth. And when I stood there uh, giving my, my speech to, to the assembled group, um, I knew that I was who I was because of all these wonderful people that were there from my parents who gave me birth all the way through to my beautiful children who I've now given life to. So I, I am who I am because of all these wonderful people that were in front of me, people that had helped me along my journey and my path. And um, I was the sum total of those people and all those experiences in the room. And I wanted to honour all those people who were there, who had made me who I was at 50 years of age um, and the and and I believe and I was honouring myself too because a lot of people turn 50 and they don't want to acknowledge it and they don't. I have friends who who do not want who who just say no. I don't want to know. Don't want to. Maybe but you're in a better we, space. We should honour ourselves. Maybe maybe you're in a better space. Than Absolutely. You were, so you feel mm. better. Oh at yeah. 50. You but feel and I wanted to give back to everybody and and thank them very much for who I was because I was the sum total of all these people and all the experiences that I'd had in there. And I had in there people 
in that room that I haven't had very good experiences with. However, I had moved beyond that because I'm now at a position of friendship and I, I, I and I don't, I, I do not carry any, um, any, any sort of, any negative things about the past against anybody um, because that doesn't serve you. Um, it, it doesn't serve to carry your baggage in life. Let it go. Um, forgive people. In fact, thank them because uh, you are who you are now. Even if you've had from the good and the bad experiences of people, I thank you because uh, I, you are, I am who we are because of all those experiences we had. And so I thanked even people I'd had negative experiences with. Because had, had I not had those experiences, I wouldn't be who I am. Mm. You've got a very tough way to have Learn how to trust and respect and build up your, your confidence and, and get a lot of positive input there. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if I had been in the class of people that I didn't feel that I could trust my body to them. Um, if in class I ever feel that um, maybe there's someone who's still got a little bit more learning to do and uh, ma maybe look a little bit out of control or still have got, got to learn about their own sense of um, coordination and, and uh, how far they can go with, with their own skills. Um, I, won't, I, I won't, I'm, very, I'm the master <laughs> of that, I'm the queen of that. I won't put my body uh, I out there for that. So you, it's making decisions and, and being able to, to, to judge how somebody is um, reacting as a partner in, in multiple self-defense or something like that. So you, it's a very good thing, I feel, that this, you're able to actually do that, you know. Be here today so would have been out the door to make your own the first week, yes. So uh, you see have kiddo is about uh, the, your instructor and they're all wonderful instructors because I've trained with them all. Um, allow you, uh, respect each and every person in the class and, uh, and always says, do what you can. It's about you. Look after yourself, look after each other, but look after yourself and do what you can and you're not forced to do anything. And I love the element of it. It's just amazing. Used to, used yeah. to say every grading before. The martial arts alike, but I'm so thankful that Hapkido has this underpinning about safety first and respect for yourself and for your partner. And also, Hapkido is such a level playing ground that there's room for everybody from, from the child to the 70 year olds. I believe we've got someone training who's like 60s, 70. How, how amazing is that? So there's room for everybody. And it's, it's such a level playing field and it's about do what you can because it's always about not competing with the 20 year olds. Do what you can, be the best you can be. And so that safety and that um, respect and that uh, ability to, you learn to judge situations, pull back if you have to, um, because you can see, and I sometimes I have to just pull back a bit and because I think, ah, oh, no, I don't think I'm gonna go there. Um, because you know, I might be feeling a bit tired. Yeah, be yeah. If I'm feeling a bit tired, or or I know I've, I've got a little bit of an injury, I will then make the decision because I'm, I make make a lot of decisions today these days. Um, that is uh, looking after me too, self respect, and and I will choose not to uh, to do something. Uh, that I feel may not be right for me at the time. So, yeah, uh, it's about it's about empowering yourself to so make decisions. <laughs> uh, Hapkido, if Hapkido had been um, some sort of a dictatorship or some sort of um, uh, a, a, a class that was based on um, violence or this um, uh, or hierarchies of of, I don't know, I can't, I can't even get my head around it because I've never seen it, so I don't even know what other things are like. I wouldn't have been here, I wouldn't have been here because it wouldn't have resonated with my spirit and my path and where I'm going. You needed to go to uh, and, and what I was needing to, yeah, what I was needing to look after me, it would not have, it wouldn't have been right for me. My inner self, because I'm very intuitive, um, my type of counselling is intuitive counselling and I'm very in touch with my inner self and my unconscious and it, it just felt right from the beginning 
Uh, it felt right, it resonated. Uh, I could see that this was right for me. Uh, and now that I'm um, uh, now a master practitioner of um, neuro-linguistic programming, um, I know at so many levels that uh, this, is, this is very right for me. Uh, and if it doesn't allow it, I wouldn't be there. Mm. It's not the right one. Mm. Uh, a martial art that allows you to make a decision in a heartbeat like that, uh, it, promotes it, it promotes the self. And promotes, uh, it, it's in alignment with your spirit. Uh, the thing about this martial art, uh, I'll tell you a secret about energies. This, this martial art is, is um, uh, vibrating at a very high vibrational level on the planet. Oh, mm. and... And you follow that. Yeah, and I know that this has been a development for me. I guess, I think up, up to Black Belt, it was the skills, the skills, the skills, and because it was the skills and the and the and then goal setting and, and all that, all the all those good things were there too. Um, uh, it um, that was bec and because I was focusing only on skills, then all all self-imposed um, barriers and problems and oh I can't do that were there. Then from my journey, which began also from Black Belt and beyond now. It's been on other levels and now the skills and everything's just flows so easily because it's just, it's now about other things. I, I've, I've realised that there's these other components to it. And you're on your thoughts. We're blessed. Our, our association. Master Brown embodies everything. If you want to have a model um, of, a, of a human being, and, uh, and, a, and a good person and a good soul. Master Brown is your model. He embodies all the higher order principles of, of values, of integrity, trust, respect, love, caring, concern, empathy, uh, um, and, and higher, higher order um, principles that are <coughs> difficult to verbalise because it's a knowingness when, when you know you're connecting with this person. Um, so you see him and you approve? Ah, oh, approve. Yeah. Approve. It's more than that. It's more than that. Uh, um, uh, uh, it, in Master Brown, I, I just see a, the most incredible role model of a person that, uh, and to have as our leader, we're so lucky, mm -hmm. to have him as our leader modelling to us uh, the way to be, the way to go, and he's still evolving. He is still growing and developing and evolving as, as a person, as an instructor, as the leader of, the, of our association. Um, he's evolving and growing, and so he is. He's going for uh, beyond fifth degree, so because it doesn't stop, because the, the only time you ever stop d developing, you're dead. If, if you're dead, you've stopped then. And even then, if you believe in life after you haven't, because you're going on to other things. But that's beside the point. <laughs> you are, you're going on to other things. But, um, but life is a process of growing and developing and developing. And when, when elderly people, or my parents, or uh, other people say, oh, I'm too old to change, I say, why, are you dead yet? <laughs> why, are you dead? So what's wrong with you? You never stop growing until you until you're in your grave and even then you can continue in another form. So Master Brown is still, and he still recognises and he still admits. Also, I love the way he humbles himself. So he's got this in one, wonderful integrity and yet this humility. And he can still say, oh, I can't do such and such. And he'll laugh when he can't, when he messes up. He messes up when he messes up a kick or something in black belt training. And that's great. That's a great thing because I feel Oh, it's good, because if he can do it, I can do it. And white belts who may see this, I mess up. You, if I can do it, you can do it and laugh and think, okay, so where to from here? What, what do you see when you see him? Practice, uh, I see Master Brown uh, uh, doing, he, uh, maybe doing his uh, bow pattern and um, nine times out of 10, uh, not doing it well, and then the 10th time nailing it. Nine times out of 10, Perfecting it, dropping it, fi fi fixing up, going on. Uh, not one little bit of uh, a problem displayed in his face. Uh, okay, picked it up this time. Next time, I'll do it just that little bit better. Uh, so I, I just see him uh, uh, with, with uh, when he's practicing, like us. He's practicing. 
he also has to uh, figure out now, how to do that just a little bit better. What did, I, what did I learn from that last time I tried that technique? What can I do now? So all this evolving, developing, it's all about that. You, just, so, so, so you never get good at a skill. Yeah. And product of his skills. Of, of. Product, he's, he, he, he then, he, he can go and represent us at um, uh, a tournament or at uh, a spectacular and, and do a, a wonderful, wonderful bow pattern. <laughs> And you think, oh, I saw him practicing that. I saw him drop the bow pattern five times out of ten or something. But uh, I, I love him. It's just constant. Yeah, he's, he's training and growing and developing always as well. Just like we have to, or, the, or, or, or a white belt has to practice and practice their, their skill of getting that, getting that release just right, feeling the way. It takes time and then it's one day. It, the light, it, it clicks. And that's when you feel, oh, I did that. And, and how many things in life can give you that? Oh, of course, that sort of a heart moment. Other things in life are, are competitive. They, yes, all, the, they also do not affirm you. Mm. How many people are in a job where they're getting affirmed, where they're getting clapped, where they're getting certificates every three months? You have to, you have to be, you have to die or retire after 25 years or 50 years of service to finally get a certificate. 50 years of service or something. See you later. How many jobs out there or how many other types of sports are there patting you on the back, shaking your hand at the end of at every grading, what hugging. About, what about every lesson uh, doing a Improving your technique. Every, every lesson. Um, you might have had a bad day at work. You, have a, you have a bad day. You, come, you have a bad day at work. You come to Hapkido. Uh, you make a breakthrough. You get that aha moment. You get that. You get a senior belt saying, well done. Look, you can do that. You get an instructor saying, hey, good cat roll. Or, hey, you couldn't do that last week. Who gets that in their daily life from anywhere, from family, from, from uh, although my family of course, but then Hapkido is a family too, by the way, I want to get onto that. Um, but it, where do you get affirmed in your daily life? At work, day in, day out, day out, whatever. I, I, and I know now, because of, of what I've learned in Hapkido, I take that and I affirm people. People who I work with, when uh, the secretaries, the other fellow teachers, I say, gee, you do a good job. That's fantastic. And children that I work with, I affirm uh, positive regard. And you're able to... You don't even have to look for it. You see, you see them being able to do a cat roll a little bit better than that, what they did a month ago. Or, or in class that, yes, they did their release ride. Or, yes, they did... They, they did their, 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 they extended at the end of their punch. There are so many a myriad of things that you can affirm anybody in class on any, any given day of the week because it's all about, it's all those little stepping stones about just little things like that which add, add up to the big picture of then you go for your grading. And whereabouts at the end of each grading we stay half an hour after it because everyone's hugging each other and shaking hands and slapping each other on the back. Where do we get that in life? Where do we get that physical contact? And, and then, uh, as I said earlier, we're, we're a family. Uh, I'm hosting a Hapkido party on the weekend. Um, I, I'm thanking my instructor more than that. I'm honouring and thanking all my fellow people that I train with. And I, I want it's my way of saying thank you to them. Where do you get that? family and we also we go out from time to time uh, the, and the black belts uh, train together and at the end of every class it's just a spontaneous clap to, to our instructor, to Master Brown, to each other. Where do you get that? When, when you use the word family. Family master. functions much like, like, uh, like a, a, a blood relative family uh, in that you've developed uh, because you're on the same journey together you've developed respect, um, caring, empathy, po what I call positive regard for each other, safety, uh, respect for each other's safety, we bow to each other. Um, so we, we, we're constantly building up um, this, this bond 
Uh, we, the, I, I don't think people realise the importance of the circle. Uh, that's the most powerful human thing that you could possibly have. The, the circle uh, joins all the energies together and we have that um, at the end of every class. Yes, the circle is a, is a, goes back um, to ancient times. It's a, it's a significant symbol for togetherness, connectedness, um, and jo the joining of energ energies, uh, because the key flows around the circle as well. So yeah, that interdependence there, yeah, joining. Yeah, in, and, and, the, uh, and the, uh, the individual, Let's make up the whole. So uh, the, the the sum the the whole the hapkido association is the the sum of its parts. So the circle is the sum of its parts as well. So as people, we're all there in a circle. We come together, and this is family. And um, uh, ancient uh, traditions, uh, many um, tribal customs when they wish to discuss things as a community, they sit, sat in the circle. It's very sim symbolic. I think people don't realise the significance of the circle. Uh, I, yeah. My... Interesting that uh, that fight or flight that we're placed in, uh, and Hapkido gives you the opportunity to be placed in situations of stress um, so that you can learn how to harness and channel that, um, that uh, fight or flight mechanism and, and channel it correctly and uh, channel uh, any anger or whatever comes up for you that may be negative emotions to the back so that when you, you're in that situation of stress you're able to deflect it and to use the uh, and deflect to your opponents or the, your opposition um, in a positive way. So yeah, you and and it's also a way of uh, are you saying of um, releasing past emotion, past trauma. Absolutely, hapkido is a fantastic way of releasing past and trauma. Literally, oh yeah, a way of that's a fascinating. Th I had never seen it like that before. That's interesting. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. So getting that repeated. Oh, yeah, repeated. yep, yep, and learning how to handle that, the trauma and the stress, because you are... Because it is in a yeah, trauma loop. Yeah, it is, yes. Give ourselves fence in the center. Absolutely, and I'll never forget what Daniel Murray used to say, better to be placed in a stressful situation here and learn how to cope with it and deal with it here and than have to experience. have it out in the street or somewhere else and not know how, because this is training you to handle it outside if you have to face it. A but stressful you're situation. Techniques and experiencing techniques that are resolved. Resolving it, and also you're learning how to harness that feeling inside too to deflect it into positive good. Into uh, you, you, you're replacing. Um, well, that's what cognitive behaviour therapy is all based on: is that you replace past negative experiences or self-talk with positive ones. That's right. So that you're giving people. This is an actual experience in a trauma-like. In a trauma-like situation, that's, yes. That's what I'm getting. To. Yeah, it is. It's a. It's a very you confronting, think? traumatic situation. To self-defense in the middle. It's, it doesn't get any more fight or flight than that because it's literally fight. It flight. is fight or flight. It is. And it is literally resolution because the techniques. And it's res know, and it's resol resolution. and it's resolution in uh, when you uh, yep because you're using you're using techniques to resolve uh, a situation that is um, potentially dangerous for you because you've got someone coming at you. So you're resolving um, the trauma, absolutely. Uh, Hapkido has just that, that many levels um, that it's just, uh, that's why I regard it as a journey and a, and a self-development because it's just, expanding more and more and even I am still coming to terms, believe it or not, uh, with its potential and with what lies behind it. And also I want to say that as an association, um, we're growing. Um, I joined and I'm Sutherland 59 and there's now well over in excess of 600 members of Sutherland now. So I, I saw it in its infancy and it's like now because of the journey that we're now changing direction with the new manual, uh, new syllabus now, 
um, and it, the association is now growing and I see it now as being in its adolescence. So Master Kim brought it as, as this wonderful, unique, um, unique uh, experience to Australia because Australia had nothing. We, we had to rely on... It was a baby mushroom. It was a, yeah, a fledgling one. We had to rely on uh, the, the Koreans and, and uh, Japanese who brought martial arts to the Western world. And Master Kim brought it over. Thank you very much, Master Kim, in, in 72, I believe. And, um, and so he, it, it, it then, it, it's, it's growing and evolving. So it's on a journey too, just as we're on our personal journey. And as I said, we're all connected here. This is like, the, we're, we're the part of the whole and, and, and the whole is the part. It, it's, um, uh, it's a philosophy of universal quantum physics that, that the parts make up the whole and the whole is within the parts. So think about that. <laughs> this is all um, NLP. Uh, anyway, he, he brought it and, and he didn't know like uh, wh where, where he was going to go with it. Uh, and so the infancy and then uh, people like Matt Geister, uh, Kevin Brown in the early days, Daniel Marie, and then they're evolving. And now here we are 20 years later in our adolescence and it's still evolving. So it's growing and developing and it's reflecting the growth and development within the individual and the journey, because it's on a journey too. So, the, so this documentary is so important um, to capture the history while we still got the connection to the, the 20 years or so that it's been. Um, to get back into shape and to be self-empowered uh, over 20 years ago after the birth of my last child. The beauty about having uh, Hapkido as a hobby and interest um, is that I could involve my children and um, they would watch me going out the door week after week and when they were old enough to start as, as young children, I think every single, yep, every one of them followed me into it, gave it a go to certain, to ver various levels, uh, and Brett, my firstborn, to so far the highest level of, of third, of third Dan. It's been beyond wonderful to be able to do a hobby and interest that I could involve my own children in. And um, to have one of my children go as far as I have so far, he's a third degree black belt um, and, an it, it, and an instructor and has started an extremely successful club uh, in Campbelltown and has been an instructor and helped so many others achieve black belt as well, could not be, uh, words, words cannot even put into, I, I can't verbalise the pride that I have in um, in my oldest son. Um, not only do I feel that it it uh, it, it was an with him. yeah, not only was it an achievement for he him getting to third dan, but all the principles of, of goal setting, determination, focus, etc. He applied to his HSC and beyond at university. He's now a very successful businessman and fitness trainer, and. Um, all those skills have all gone hand in hand and I was so thankful to have been able to give my son that opportunity and then and to train with him to be in a class to go to Korea with him with the, with the tour group that that went a couple of years back and to be in black belt training or or, cl or a class and you look pretty oh look yeah and photos. and to go to I know to go to Hapkido to go to Korea with my son to look over and here we are sharing something together. How many, how many parents and children share experiences together like that, have, have the opportunity to do that? And to look across and to see him and my heart just, just bursts with, with love and pride for him. I'm just so happy to have it. And I just feel I've given him a gift. And, um, and he's taken it with two hands and run with it. And that's just wonderful to see. And um, 
my other children different personalities um, and that's okay they're all amazing in their own way and I love them to bits because every single one of them is achieving in their own um, uh, fields of endeavor and, and interests at university um, in business um, in life they're, they're all amazingly achieving and, and they got to various levels green belt red belt um, uh, my daughter won girl of the year once another son won one one boy of the year and that was just amazing to have two children boy and girl of the year in the at the one tournament remember that um, just to have that how many parents can can sort of be there doing the same thing and see their children uh, learning things and, and, and engaging with the wonderful principles and philosophy and the people of Hapkido. And I knew I was exposing my children to something that was just so wonderful and the people in it and to have them, uh, even though some of them for just for short periods of time, but to have had that exposure because at all sorts of levels, they've taken on board principles, things that they gained from it and gone into our areas in life and just run with it. And um, most importantly was uh, that as the parent and being responsible to, to raise my children, I wanted to model the best that I could be and, and in being the best that I could be, they are the best that they can be. And as a parent, as a parent and as a, as a counsellor of children who ha have been damaged in life, I can say to any of you who are parents, your children are watching you. For anybody, your children are watching you. They are little, they are sponges and they absorb everything. So why not be the best that you can be and model the best possible behaviour you possibly can model to your children? So in this achievement thing. Fun, um, also respect for them, respect for their integrity, respect for who they are. I've never forced any of my children to do a Hapkido. Brett chose to, others looked, tried, took it to where they wanted to, moved on, that's fine. Uh, because, uh, because fun is also important. Children have to develop at their own rate. It so may not suit everyone. With achievement. It's, achievement. Do you think that the, the, the fun and, is, and they is, are a, is a theme in this? Yes, they a are a happy, they are, we are a happy family. Um, and um, the most Does important- Does it help you excel as my, my thing? Does it, fun it, help you excel? Fun, you? fun with it. Like uh, uh, my, mem my memories of my daughter and, and son with boy and girl of the year was the fun that they had on that day of the tournament it was just um, phenomenal they 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 i'm sure my scott my instructor can remember that they were just everyone just had fun doing it and it was all part of um what they were also sure. learning and achievement and the things that they were learning and the skills and all the other things that the one yeah it's a, it's a fun it's um it's just uh it, it, the unique thing about hapkido is that you can be relaxed <laughs> you can just Feel relaxed wherever you are or whoever you're with. It's um, because there's nothing tyrannical or hierarchical or um, Master Kim yeah. Had a sense of humor in it. Oh Master yeah, Master Kim, Kim was amazing. That Master Kim, and Master Kim loved loved the kids doing it, yeah. and the women. Mm. Master Kim, I am the sparrow that I am today, and I know that you wanted me to also cover what I consider I can do well, and 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 I. I, I'm not a very. I, I'm. I'm pretty good at my high spinning heel kicks. Not going to be up here. Doesn't matter. What I can do, I'm really happy with what I can do well, and I consider my falling well. It was never an issue that I couldn't fall. Um, I think I must just must have had the, a, a fabulous instructor. The 